Cristo, la pelota para Bona. Arrueta por la derecha, el genio del mundo mundial. When the name Benito Mussolini is mentioned, the images that come to mind are of passionate speeches, Italian National Socialism, totalitarianism, and trains that run on time. From an American perspective, the sport of football is not something often associated with Mussolini, but actually, El Duce and football share a deep historical connection that spans back to the early days of the emerging global sport. Benito Mussolini is one of the most influential figures in Italian history. Serving as the Prime Minister from 1922 to 1945, he oversaw and shaped major events in the country such as the aftermath of World War I, the Great Depression in Italy, entry into World War II, and even his brief removal from power before his reinstatement. However, what Mussolini is most known for is his role in the rise of fascism. Inspired by the work of Giovanni Gentile, Mussolini took the philosophy, expanded upon it, and made it into a tangible political ideology fascism. This new mindset, which involves totalitarianism, ultranationalism, strict social engineering, state-run economics, and an aggressive foreign policy, captured the support of many in a nation left devastated by the First World War and the Great Depression. Then, after continual shows of force, King Victor Emmanuel III bestowed the title of Prime Minister to Benito Mussolini, making him both the first fascist dictator and Italy the first fascist nation in history in 1922. The full effect of Mussolini can still be felt in Italian culture, still to this day. When politics and sports collide in the United States, it is understandably to the dismay of many. In Italy, however, the relationship is very different. Because of how important sport, specifically football, which is known as calcio, is to Italian culture and identity, everything is heavily involved in football, and politics is no exception. This can be seen prominently with the existence of hooliganism and ultras, which are extraordinarily passionate football fans whose support for the team is usually tied to extreme political ideologies on all sides of the political spectrum. Due to his allegiance to the Axis powers in World War II and his connection to fascism, Benito Mussolini is not a figure who is looked kindly upon by the American populace. But in modern day Italy, it is much more nuanced. While the general consensus is mostly negative, Many nevertheless still support Mussolini in some way, ranging from full-on neo-fascist to those who just agree with his views on nationalism, government's role in economics, class collaboration, or a longing for Italian military strength. Inevitably, many ultras and fan bases for several Italian football clubs hold fascist or pro-Mussolini ideologies. While there are many clubs, the most prominent is SS Lazio, whose ultras are known to be famously fascist headlined by the notorious ultra group, the Iri du Cibili. Many of these ultra groups were formed between the 1960s and 1990s, a very tumultuous time in Italian history, which has been named the Anni di Piombo, or years of lead due to the high amount of political violence. This period led to the creation of numerous ultra groups holding extremist views from all sides of the Italian political spectrum, but they were also known for their fierce passion as well as politically charged violence. The Iri du Cibili, in particular, were at one time Lazio's most prominent ultra group, holding so much power that they sold more merchandise than the club itself, and they often had a say in player signings due to their expressive fan demonstrations. The Iri du Cibili often had ties with prominent fascist figures in Italy, and sometimes even mafia families. Overall, the way that the ultra group is structured is similar to that of a cadre political party, much like fascist political parties themselves. At the moment, however, the Iri du Cibli have been inactive since 2020 after the assassination of their leader, Fabrizio Pichatelli, who was shot by Hitman in a public park. As for El Duce, Lazio is said to be the club which Mussolini himself supported, and it is also one of two top-tier clubs from Rome, and as a result, they have a huge rivalry with the other club, Roma FC, commonly referred to as the Derby della Capitale. Meetings between the two is where the Iri du Cibili have drawn the most attention as the rivalry has strong political undertones. The Ultra Group is also very pro Mussolini and in 2019 they flew a massive banner reading Unone a Benito Mussolini or Honor to Benito Mussolini at the Piazzale Loreto at Milan 
where Mussolini's body was hung following his execution during the demise of the Axis at the end of World War II. Lazio Ultras are not the only ones who support Mussolini and or fascism, as some of the club's players have as well, the most notable of which is Paolo Di Canio, who was a star forward for Lazio among several other clubs during the 2000s, and also a self-described fascist. In fact, Di Canio would often celebrate his goals by running to the fans and performing a Roman salute, and he has friendships with a few well-known fascist figures in Italy. If Di Canio's admiration for Mussolini was ever in doubt, one must also know that he has a portrait of the leader tattooed across his back, the word El Duce on his arm, and another tattoo of fascist, the symbol of fascism, also on his back. Beyond the influence of his ideology, Mussolini is also linked with football through his bloodline. While Mussolini's granddaughter, Alessandra Mussolini, has carved out a career for herself in the Italian Senate and European Parliament, her son, Romano Floriani, is a professional footballer who plays for none other than Lazio. Romano Floriani Mussolini, who is the great-grandson of El Giuce, started off as a youth player in Roma, then Lazio's youth academy, playing as a right back. But in March, aged 18, he was officially signed by Lazio and promoted to the senior team, becoming a full-fledged professional football player. In all truthfulness, the idea of a player turning out for Lazio of all clubs, with the name Mussolini etched across the back of his shirt, is so fascinating and coincidental that it is comical. Romano Floriani Mussolini has admirably said himself that he does not care for politics, nor does he want to get involved in the partisan scene. The reason he plays for Lazio is not political, rather it is just because he is from Rome. But in the face of inevitable political criticism and pressure he will receive from all sides, one only hopes that Romano will be judged solely off his individual talent as a footballer, rather than by his family surname. The presence of the Mussolini name in football does not solely pertain to his great-grandson though, as Benito himself left a sizable imprint in football history during the 1934 World Cup, which was hosted in Italy. During the late 1920s and into the 1930s, football was exponentially growing in popularity, not just in Italy but across the entire world. Mussolini recognized this. He saw the draw and admiration of the sport, which reached people of all classes and in all Italian regions, so he wanted to use that to his advantage. Mussolini then planned to use football as a propaganda tool to show his own people and the rest of the world how powerful Italian fascism is. From Mussolini's point of view, football and fascism go hand in hand as they are both based on physical brutality, national triumph, and the elevation of the common man. Though this is a loose comparison that can tie football to a myriad of other vastly different political ideologies, El Duce was not going to let this opportunity go to waste. After the inaugural World Cup was staged in Uruguay in 1930, Mussolini made sure that the second World Cup would be hosted on Italian shores, and through controversial coercion within FIFA, he got his wish. Mussolini put his ally, Achille Starace, in charge of the tournament's public image. Starace was the party secretary of the National Fascist Party, who played a massive role in propaganda, and was also an avid sports fan. As a result, all the media promotion and advertisement for the World Cup in Italy was submerged with fascist undertones, whether it be posters, cigarettes, stamps, or even the World Cup trophy itself. Up until 1970, it was tradition for the World Cup winners to be handed the famous Jules Rimet trophy, a golden handheld statue of the Greek goddess Nike. In 1934, however, the winners would be handed another trophy alongside the Jules Rimet, the Copa del Duce, a massive cup-like trophy that dwarfed the Jules Rimet and was named after Mussolini. This new trophy, as well as all the promotional material for this World Cup, were also all heavily influenced by Futurism, a popular artistic and social movement at the time which emphasized values such as achievement through speed, innovation, modern industrial technology, and brutality. This movement is often seen as a core element of Italian fascism. On the pitch, though, is where Mussolini's propaganda would pay off as the Italian national team stormed into the World Cup as heavy favorites. In an old and obsolete 16-team format with no group stage and strictly knockout rounds, Italy faced the USA, who finished in fourth place at the previous edition. The Americans were no match for the Italians as they ran out emphatic 7-1 winners. Then, in the quarterfinals, Italy lined up against Spain, one of the best teams in the world at the time. The match between the two quickly descended into a bloody battle, resulting in several casualties. Spain's best player and legendary goalkeeper, Ricardo Zamora, picked up a serious injury and Italy's star defender, Mario Pizziolo, had his leg broken. Amongst the violence, Luis Reguero scored first for La Fiera Roja before Giovanni Ferrari, 
equalized for the Azuri. The match stayed 1-1 after extra time, resulting in a replay of the match the next day to decide the winner, an old relic of a format that is no longer used today. In the replay, Fatigue Spain couldn't match their aggressive vigor of the last match, and wilted under the Italian boot, which showed no remorse over the two games. An early goal from Giuseppe Miazza meant that Italy would advance to the semifinals where they would face Austria after a 1-0 victory. Continual controversy surrounded the match though, and it was alleged that Mussolini handpicked all the referees for each of Italy's game, ensuring an Italian victory. While there was no concrete proof of this occurring, the issue would only grow as the tournament progressed. Austria was Italy's next opponent, and they were no pushovers, possessing a talented squad of technically gifted players. But with their contrasting physical and pragmatic style of play, Italy was able to shut down Austria's expansive and dynamic football on the San Siro's pitch which was swamped with rain. Their 1-0 victory was sealed after yet another early goal, this time by Enrique Guaita, who was one of many Argentine-Italian players in the squad, representing both nations in international football. The refereeing in this match was mirrored in even more controversy though, as it was alleged that Mussolini himself had dinner with the Swedish referee Ivan Icklin the night before the match where he either intimidated or bribed him to favor Italy. Again, while not confirmed, the Austrian players would go on to say for decades afterwards that this match was stolen from them and that the referee was corrupt. Of course, this can be summed up to the Austrians simply being bitter they lost, but the suspicion is still there regardless and Ivan Ickland would also be the referee for the World Cup final as well. To make matters worse, in the other semifinal, Czechoslovakia overcame Germany 3-1. In a series of continual allegations, it was rumored that the Italian referee, Ronaldo Barlacina, helped his home nation by guaranteeing that Germany, who was a very strong team, would not make the final against Italy. Whether or not this is true, Czechoslovakia, and not Germany, advanced to the final, where they would meet the mighty Italians. A World Cup final between Italy and Czechoslovakia was also very controversial for the political atmosphere of the time. Czechoslovakia, which was a communist nation and an ally to the Soviet Union, was challenging Italy, the face of fascism. The struggle for domination of Europe between these two extreme ideologies had enveloped the continent, and it was now also found on the football pitch. The 1934 World Cup final was no longer just Italy versus Czechoslovakia, it was also fascism versus communism with liberty and freedom shunned off to the sidelines. The match itself was fitting for the occasion, as both teams were equally matched, denying each other from dominating. It was the Czechoslovakians who scored first though, with Antonin Puk's late goal in the second half. But before they could spoil the Italian party, Raimundo Orsi equalized with 10 minutes to go, and eventually the match went into extra time. With the momentum in their favor, Italian legend Angelo Schiavio scored the game winner with a beautiful first touch and quick shot, solidifying a win for his country on home soil. When the captain Gian Piero Combi lifted the Jules Armé and the Copa do Duce, Mussolini obviously used Italy's first World Cup victories to his benefit, utilizing it as a propaganda tool for his regime and Italian fascism in general. While many criticized this Italian team, delegitimizing their victory due to the actions of their dictator, this should take nothing away from this talented and world-class squad who were easily one of the best teams in the world at the time. To add further proof, Italy would remarkably defend their title, winning also the 1938 World Cup in France without any issue of corruption. So whether it be fascist ultras, fascist footballers, his love for Lazio, his own great-grandson playing for the same team, or the 1938 World Cup being hosted in and won by Italy, Mussolini and football share a unique connection that goes deeper than most are aware of. While Mussolini's life ended at the hands of a partisan firing squad in the village of Giulina de Masegra as American and British troops conquered Italy in April 1945, the brutal legacy of El Duce would notoriously linger in Italian football and Italian society in general for many years to come.